Hey, welcome back, everybody. Glad to have you aboard. And yes, it's time for another edition of 20 Minutes, the podcast that, well, let's face it, I only make you torture you for 20 minutes. And so far, you're all good. But uh, again, always enjoy getting caught up with the coaches across the state and uh, some new coaches, some older coaches, some middle of the road coaches and uh, bigger schools, smaller schools. Doesn't really matter. Always good to check in with the guys that, uh, invest so much into your kids and your school districts and your football programs and, and kind of get the feel for where their program's at and where they're headed. And uh, very excited, happy to bring in the head coach of your Downers Grove North Trojans, um, Joe Hereni. And Joe, it's great to see you. You too. It's uh, been a little while, as, as I mentioned before we started recording, only 102 days left till kickoff. So uh, it's coming. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Summer camp right around the corner as well. So it's an exciting time for sure. How how much fun was it seeing the success of the basketball program? And again, I know some of those kids, also football players, multi-sport athletes, really. And I mean, how much fun did that make the winter for you and, and some of the guys around the football program? And it had to it had to give you a little bit more excitement and watch these kids go out and compete and do as well as they did. No, for sure. I mean, it was uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I announced some of the the home games too, so that was a lot of fun as well to get kind of that seat um, to watch the guys compete. Um, there's a there's a bunch of football guys on the team. Uh, the Thulin brothers, Ethan and Owen, um, Alan Tate, Jamison Ordaway, um, Toth. So we have a lot of football guys that are that are basketball guys as well, but also you know just our our guys that are either basketball, soccer, and you know some other things. So it was. Coach Thomas does a great job, and um, it was it was a lot of fun watching those guys compete um, and play some play play some of the best players in the state, and obviously have a have a great run. And you know, I, I think they came up short in their minds, but I mean, that, that's nothing. That's a great run. run. Yeah, it's unbelievable. So, um, you know, I feel like like you said, the the multi sport athlete thing is huge, especially for our school yeah. um, to compete at in the West suburban silver, you got to have your best athletes play more than one sport. So, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's talked about and and every coach says it, well, you've got to have those multi-sport athletes, but you know, a lot will say it, but maybe a lot of times a lot can't get that to happen. How do you guys make it work at North? And let's face it, you're a seven, eight size school for football. You're a bigger school. So it's, you know, it's even maybe harder for some of these kids to pull it off, but you guys seem to really encourage it. It seems to work. Yeah, no, I think I think it goes back to, you know, just having a great relationship with those, you know, level head coaches. Um, coach Thomas, the basketball uh, head coach, and I have a good relationship. We just had a conversation today about um, how summer camp will go with with some of our shared guys and what we want to do to, you know, support both programs, but also get our work done. Um, coach Briscoe, our baseball coach, who have had he's had a great year as well. They're doing really, really well. Um, he's on uh, lower level uh, freshman staff for me. Um, so just getting that that buy-in from from some of those programs and those coaches that you know know that we have to share each other and you know you might have to sacrifice a guy not being at a, at a lift work or at a workout that you want him to be but you trust those coaches that they're getting their workout um a, a, as well and you know our wrestling coach does a great job as well so um some of our guys are, are those wrestling guys in the winter as well so just sharing it respecting you know the the fellow head coaches and understand that they have their best in the kids best interest at heart it might not be exactly how you would do it but you know just having that trust i think has has gone a long way plus you know, the kids just feeling confident that they can continue to compete in the sports yeah. that they've loved and grown up playing so yeah you know it's funny um there are there are programs out there and i think of downers north every time i think of these type of programs that over the years have built up a, a tradition and kind of a reputation. And, and I think Downers North is one of those. And when I think of Downers North football, I think of toughness, I think of physical football. How does that continue to happen? Is it, is it, is it a focus? Is it a big mantra for you guys going in? I mean, it, you're going back to, you know, you're going back to coach Kleckner and you're going back years and years and, you know, it coach Ventrelli and, it's always been the case and still remains the case at Downers North. How does that happen, Joe? Um, I think, it, you know, a little bit has to do with, you know, the the youth program, the Downers Grove Panthers, which, you know, when I was a kid, I played for. And um, 
the the physicality piece i think is something that we definitely stress and i know um you know the lower level or the the youth program does as well um physical football is a physical game you got to be um have some toughness to play it um so i don't think we go out of our way to you know do any special drills or anything like that but it is definitely something that we talk about um you know uh with our with our linemen especially that it you know that's where the game's won and lost. And, but I think we're seeing a little bit more physicality with some of the skill positions as well. Our safeties this last year, uh, Joe Shirelli, Josh Lambert, both going to whitewater, um, played a real physical brand of football. So um, I think they see the the kids that came before them play with a physical nature. And I think, you know, they want to continue that tradition. So, um, and yeah, you're, you're, you're spot on with those coaches, coach Ventrelli, uh, coach Wander, coach Kleckner, uh, Wander and Kleckner still on my staff. So um, it's neat to have the, the past and you know the future it's still still going so it's it's great still see john wander everywhere it's unbelievable he he's just, a man he's a man about town that's for sure shows up just show, i see him on a sideline somewhere playoff game anything for sure unbelievable for sure for sure um, 2022 from my observation i thought you had a really nice year um, you know, you wind up six and three in the regular season. You know, you got that cupcake schedule in the West of the <laughs> Silver. But again, your three losses, three playoff teams, very close games in all three of those. You know, you make it in 7A, you beat Lincoln Park, and then you lose to a very tough Mount Carmel team and ended up winning state. Your thoughts on 2022 and your breakdown of how the season went. Yeah, I, you know, I, I was incredibly proud of our seniors. We started a lot of seniors um, and and they did a great job and they were successful when they were, were younger at the freshman and sophomore level. Some of them up with us during that COVID season. Um, but no, I was overall super pleased. Um, like you said, we lost some tough games against um, against York in, in overtime and Glen Bard by seven and LT by 10, um, all who had great playoff runs. Um our goal, obviously, going forward is to win those tighter ball games and, and come up um, with W's in those games as well. But, no, I was overall very, very pleased. I thought we took a step forward as a program. Uh, played Mount Carmel tough, you know, especially in the first half. Had a lead going into the third quarter and um, just couldn't hold on. And, you know, obviously, they're a fantastic team and well coached. And talk about physical, they're, they're for sure physical as well. So, um, no, overall, I was really pleased. I'm excited for, you know, our seniors – um, got the bucket back from Hinsdale Central. So that's the first time in 17 years, which yep. is, you know, something to say for sure. Um, but, you know, we've, we talked all the time. Hinsdale Central wants that thing back. So um, oh, yeah. we're excited for for the opportunity to continue, um, you know, upon the success that we had this past year. So, no, I overall pleased for sure, um, you know, another step in the right direction. You obviously coached at Highland Park before you came over to Downers North and, and you spent some time in the Giants program. Um Coming over and, and being in the West Suburban and coaching and getting to learn the conference, I mean, how much different is it in this conference? Yeah, it's um, it's a grind for sure. It's uh, it, there there's no easy game. There's no game that you're like oh, we're going to be okay because every every team can beat you. Um, you know, our, our games against Hinsdale Central and Oak Park were were tight as well. Um, even when we, you know, play on the other side against Downer South, one of the better teams that won the conference in the gold this past year. Um, you know, you better come to play um, in the West Suburban Silver. I think it overall helps us, um, you know, once we do make the playoffs that, you know, we've been battle tested, which is great, especially, you know, with our enrollment being that we usually end up in 7A. I don't know if we'll ever end up in 8A in the recent future, but, um, you know, obviously we'd have to see. But um, it's definitely different. Um, love my time in Highland Park, but it's – uh it's a different conference. That's for sure. That's for yeah. Sure. There, there's no doubt. It's uh, you said it's there's, there's no gimmies week in and week out with your schedule. And that hasn't changed for years. It's no, you know, some years more playoff success than others, but you know that you're coming out of that conference. You're, you're battle tested. Every and, day. and unbelievable coaching. I mean, the, yeah. the, the preparation that the guys in our conference do with their yeah. whole staffs is, is fantastic and you know it's battle testing for the coaches as well so um and, really and the other thing i'll add and something you can talk to as well and and i don't know maybe maybe i'm on too much of the outside looking in but what i notice about your conference and the coaches in your conference a lot of cooperation there there's a lot of coaches that that you guys seem to get along is that fair no i would agree for sure um you know there's there's a little bit of history with, you know, each, each guy that they've been around, you know, different programs and things like that. I've worked with Mike Fitzgerald from York. 
um, my my last year at St. Francis. But yeah, no, I think it's uh, you know, it just comes from that you know respect of the programs that these guys have built and the success that they've had. But no, I would agree. I think we we mesh well as a conference, both even even with the silver and gold coaches that um, you know we we have a good relationship. We love competing against each other and respect each other. Um, and definitely want to win when that when that ball kicks off. But no, I would agree. Uh, definitely respect between the coaches and the teams for sure. It's interesting you mentioned your your background with St. Francis and Coach Fitz in St. Francis. Hey, look who's on that week one schedule this year. It's St. Sure. Francis. How did that come about? Um, so we uh, we were hoping to um, have a home game, and some of the teams that were willing to play us at home. Um, uh, it was uh, it was uh, it, an interesting choice, and uh, St. Francis reached out to us, and um, I thought it would be a great game. You know, uh, we we got some kids, uh, local kids that are on St. Francis's team, and um, you know, we were excited to compete against a team that you know went to the semifinals against Providence, lost, and they they were up in that game for a little bit too. So, um, no, it'll be it'll be cool. Um, I enjoyed my time teaching and coaching at Francis. Uh, my offensive coordinator Josh Croce was a player of mine there, so. Um, there's a little bit of background there too. So that's kind of fun. Um, no, but excited. Um, Coach McMillan's done a great job. Um, they got some really good players as well. So, um, you know, excited for that week one matchup. It's a challenge to to take it over to 2130 West Roosevelt Road. It'll be fun. <laughs> still, still in the back of your mind. Huh? You know, that's not that. for sure. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, recruiting this time of year, as we talked about before we started recording, it's a lot, a lot going on. A lot of coaches in the building, which is always good to hear. Um, how do you handle that whole subject with your parents these days? It's uh, as we've talked about, and I continue to talk about here as much as possible. Uh, the landscape now, recruiting wise, compared to even two years ago, is like a complete 180 from where it was. Uh, offers are harder than ever to come by. It seems like there's less and less offers available, money available for football for kids trying to trying to advance their career. How do you address it? How do you deal with it with parents these days? So, yeah, I think the communication piece is big. And, and like you said earlier, you know, it's the parents want the best for their kids, right? They want to know what's the best route for them, what's the best, what I can do for them, what they 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 can do for to support their kids as well. Um, so just being real honest with like what the process looks like in on our end, um, what they can do to kind of, you know, get more exposure out there prospect camps, how to create a highlight tape, um, put together some of that information ahead of time, just so it, so they have an idea of what's going on. Um, and, you know, just kind of trying to get as many coaches through the building as possible and get them to um, see kids move around and see kids do different things and um, just get them to introduce them, see kids in the hallway, um, just getting more and more coaches in um, to see all of our kids, right? So, you know, we have, we've had D3 coaches through, we've had FBS coaches through. Um, we had a Division II coach today. We had an M F FCS coach today. Um, so just getting more and more of that foot traffic um, and, you know, get, scheduling times where they're just around kids anyway. Maybe it's a workout. We, we had the weight room going today and we had a coach in there. Um, and just getting that exposure out there. Um, I mean, the bottom line is it, it, me as a parent, you as a parent, we all want what's best for our kids. Um, and, you know, each parent, you know, takes that responsibility very, very seriously, which I respect. Um and just trying to get them to understand what what what's within my control, what's in, within their control, um, and then trying to explain, you know, the the recruiting landscape is pretty crazy with the transfer portal. Yeah. Um, college coaches come in all the time with different stories. It's you know, it's a different deal everywhere people go. I had one guy today who said they've never lost uh, anybody to the portal until this year, and then they lost four. Um, so it's just yeah. kind of a a different different story for for each program. And um, and I I do think it's trickled down for sure. Um, you know, to the high school level. And we're seeing some of that. I think some of our guys, you know, continuing to play in uh, next year, our seniors kind of were hurt a little bit by that in terms of what was available money-wise and yep. what kind of opportunities for sure. Uh, looking ahead a little bit to 2023. Actually, let's let's stick on the player aspect of it. Um, Kale Brazino, your linebacker, um, drawn a lot of, lot of interest, a lot of scholarship offers. Yep. Talk talk about him a little bit. What what is his personality? What does he kind of bring to the table? Obviously, really good size kid, really good athlete. Maybe off the field a little bit. The kind of kid he is. Uh, he's a great kid. Um, super hardworking. Um, very disciplined. Very focused on um, how to better himself in in all areas. Um, I remember one college coach came in and said, 
hey, what were you eating up in the cafeteria? He's like, they, he said, do you have any, is there any good food up there? And, and Kale said, no, I don't eat that food. I mean, I make four BLTs a day. Um, so it brings his lunch, you know, really concentrate on his nutrition, what he can do to better himself and um, keep his body healthy and continue to get stronger. Um, you know, he, he took up wrestling last year and had a really good year. Um, and as this season was starting, <clears throat> I love our wrestling coach, but I was worried he was going to make him cut to 182. Um, <laughs> and that would have been um, uh, probably a miserable wrestling season for Kale. And uh, But we had a great conversation about what, you know, his future could look like. And um, he stuck at two, 220 and, um, you know, kind of hovered around 205, 210. Now he's walking around at 215. So um, continuing to work on his body and getting bigger. Um, he's a big kid overall. I mean, his hands are like four, yeah. four X gloves he's got to yeah. get. Um He's a big gymnast. Um, when he was younger, he was wow. uh, heavy into the gymnastics. So um, kind of a family family tradition there. So um, family's phenomenal. He's got an older brother who had a phenomenal health teacher at DGN. Um, he was a really good health teacher um, and handsome nonetheless. Um, but uh, who that was for sure. And he's got two uh, two younger sisters. So um, very involved in the community. Um, great kid. Super intelligent. SAT is. I probably couldn't do take three of them to add up to his score. Um, so real, 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 real sharp. Um, where do you see him down the line? Staying at linebacker? You see him maybe moving to D line? You know, I think uh, to be honest, I think uh, if you watch his highlight tape, I think we'll do very, very similar things um, this year. We were kind of asked him to do a, a few different things, and I think that speaks to his intelligence too. You know, we asked him to play a little bit of the overhang linebacker, play a little bit of um, D line against Mount Carmel. Um, maybe even a little bit of inside backer, um, and maybe maybe you'll see him on offense. I don't know. We'll have to we'll have to see. I know I know you can have a couple other seniors as well that are seen. I call them seniors, but twenty twenty fours that uh, are drawing drawing some interest. Who are a couple of those other names that we need to keep an eye on? Yeah, our running back um, Noah Battle um, has had a really um, interesting evaluation period. You know, it's um, it's it's different at the running back position, similar to you know quarterback where there's there's really one spot and you know like you said less and less availability in terms of programs and what they have um offer wise especially for a running back some schools aren't taking any some are taking two um but Noah battles had a really good um spring evaluation he's got two division two offers right now um from minnesota state and um sioux falls university of sioux falls um but i think um after his camp season some of that will start to you know um improve for him even more um, in terms of interest, maybe at the FCS level. Um, so we're excited for him that way. Um, we've got another Thulin brother, uh, Ethan's younger brother, Owen, um, who was a point guard for that basketball team, like we talked about. Um, had a great season at DB for us, played corner. Um, he's going to have to play a little bit of receiver as well for us this year. Um, so excited for for his potential. Um, very, All three of these guys that I've mentioned, um, academics are off the charts as well. So that can only help them. Um, going forward. And then we got a couple other guys that are, are getting a little bit of interest too, um, but excited for them as well. Um, you know, and you look at offensively, only two starters back, and you mentioned Noah Battle being one of those. Right. But boy, you got some intriguing young young dudes on the way up. You got to talk about a couple of these underclassmen. You got an underclassman quarterback. I think I've been watching him throw since he was about in fifth grade. And yeah, I remember he snuck in as a sixth grader, didn't he? Or he's something? done that a couple of times at my camps. And you know what? Hey, I don't. I I hate putting this out there because then I'll have a hundred kids. Yeah. Doing <laughs> I love I love when a kid does that every once in a while. And the interesting thing, of course, we're talking about Owen Lansu, your yes, twenty twenty six quarterback. The interesting part about it, as young as he was. You look at him in the face, you knew he was younger, but if you watch him throw, yeah, he hung with everybody. So talk about a couple of those young guys on the rise. Yeah, I mean, quarterback-wise, like you said, Owen Lansu, um, he had a phenomenal freshman year um, and played on the uh, sophomore level and even some varsity snaps for us um, in some different games. Um, he's had a very, very good spring evaluation period that a couple coaches have been out. Um, to watch him, you know, one of our workouts that we had, coaches had stopped by. Um, he can really spin the ball. He um, is a tireless worker as well. He he really gets after it, um, lifting wise, and you know, just putting his work in. He plays seven on seven with Supreme, uh, with Coach Holcomb, um, his his quarterback guy, um, and, and super uh, academically smart as well. So 
great kid, continues to work hard. And I know he's excited, um, you know, for this, for, for this summer, you know, some of the camps that he's going to, but even more excited for the season um, and compete with, you know, some of his buddies. Um, uh, Charlie Cruz is Charlie. another one that's like a, like a combine showcase rat. And all he does is <laughs> make plays. For make sure. Plays. For sure. Um, you know, and Charlie's obviously a year older than Owen um, being a 25 kid and, Owen has always played, you know, up a year when they were in youth ball and stuff like that. So they've been teammates for a long time. Um, so yeah, Charlie's a great kid. Um, he's got a good frame. He's a, he's a bigger, bigger receiver than we're kind of used to, which is, which is nice for us. Um, his top end speed is really good as well. Um, obviously really good hands. Um, hoping to, hoping to see him maybe play a little bit of safety as well, along with no battle. Um, but, uh, we want him to master the craft of, of receiver and continue to develop that relationship with Owen. I'm um, so excited for, for his, his, uh, his junior year as well. Yeah. I it's, I'm, I'm excited to see how things go for you guys this year. Cause like you said, I mean, that was a really good senior class you graduated. So definitely, definitely. there's no doubt. We don't want to overlook that, that you've got some younger guys that are going to have to step up, but definitely boy, it's interesting. It's an interesting group you've got for sure. Um, as far as this coming season, as I mentioned, we're 102 days away from kickoff. Walk us through the summer. How do you handle it? Um, do you start right away as soon as the school year ends or do you wait a little bit? Kind of, how do you manage your summer? Yeah. And, and we've done a few different things over, um, you know, my, the, I guess this will be my going into my ninth year as a head coach. Um, we take the first week of uh, out, out after school. So we're, we're going to start June 5th. Um, and we go four days a week. Um, we'll do four, four weeks in June. So that'd be 16 days. Um, and then we do two weeks in July, um, kind of give them that last 12 to 13 days off um, before we go into the first practice on August 7th. Um, got seven on seven set up with um, a few different places. We're hosting one um, with the West Suburban Conference. Um, obviously, the new rule this year with um, 11 on 11. We're only we're going to do a few of those. We've got a few teams yeah. set up that we're going to work with where we have good relationships with the coaching staff um, and excited about those. But um, that'll be a new challenge and a, and a new experience for us. So we're excited about that. But uh, yeah, just we we start off in June and try to keep after it and keep our kids focused on what they need to be focused on. But also and allow them and, and being realistic about some of our kids who play travel baseball. And yeah. so that's why we shut it down on Thursday. Don't go Friday um, for some of those travel tournaments. And Coach Thomas has those guys in a, in a June, you know, uh, summer league as well. So just uh, trying to manage all that while also allowing our kids to be kids and get a job if they need to and, yeah. and like that. So great. Um, one thing, one more thing before I let you go. And again, I appreciate you taking time on your night off and for sure uh, for joining us. Um, David Edwards, any, any contact with him? And if you do, does he still think in his mind that he's a quarterback or no? Has he finally given that dream up? Uh, so yeah, D David comes around a good amount. Um, we've got his little brother, Joe, who's a current yeah. sophomore. Yes. So he's, he's another guy in that 25 class to keep an eye on. Um, last year out there, I said, what size shoe are you, Joe? And he's like, Oh, 17. I was like, Oh <laughs> right. yeah, that's normal. Yeah. Um, yeah. but, uh, no, the Edwards family is phenomenal. The dad uh, helps out on our freshman level as well. Um, I would say David price still, Still would like to play quarterback. I think yep. that's in there. But uh, man, is he kind of outgrew it? Yeah, he, yeah. I would say he outgrew it. Um, I would say uh, he is. Man, he's a wealth of information, uh, offensive line wise. Yeah. Um, I I coach the offensive line, so talking him through some things, and we've had some some levels of a little bit of disagreement about what our kids can do as opposed to what NFL offensive linemen can do. <laughs> uh, yeah, but. Um, it's, it's great to have him, you know, uh, in the, in the building, you know, kids, it's the talk of the school when, when he's on the treadmill, yeah. people are like, who is that? And then it's basically, everybody knows who it is. Um, yeah, so you, just, you talk about a wonderful representative of Donners Grove North. That's that guy right there. There's for sure. Guy. For sure. And that, I mean, when Joe's done the, the Edwards family, it's going to be a long time before we have another Edwards walking through the halls of Donners Grove. There you North. go. Um, I mean, with Tommy and Garrett and Connor and, yep. you know, it's those phenomenal football players. The heck of a run. For sure. For that sure. Name. And Joe might be the one to break the streak of not playing quarterback. So we'll, we'll, have, to, <laughs> we'll have to do that for him. So. Oh, I used, to ta I used to tease David so much about that when he was a senior year of high school. I'm like, dude, you're never going to play quarterback. <laughs> not going to have. He knew it. 
for sure. Old, but I mean, I think he, when he, went to he didn't give it up easily. I think when he went to Wisconsin, in the back of his head, he probably knew he was going to turn into an offensive lineman. Yeah. Boy, he believed he was a tight end. That's yes, sure. and the next time you see Sean Lewis, tell him the same thing as well, because he also thought. He was a quarterback, went to Wisconsin, and yeah, things changed. <laughs> For sure. So I appreciate it, man. Wish you the best of luck. You know I'll run into you somewhere this summer. And, uh, again, just thanks again for your time. For sure. Edgy, I appreciate everything you do for Illinois high school football and the kids. And um, I've been looking at your website since, uh, you know, what was that, 2000 maybe when I was yeah, a kid. Yeah, when Moses, when Moses was playing. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, for sure, for sure. And our right. White Sox need to step it up. Well, that, that's the last time. Don't even. That's a whole other podcast. Are you kidding? <laughs> oh, now you got me fired up. All right, sure. Joe. Thanks All a right. lot.